Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth, joined by Derek Young today for your K-State recruiting update. We bring you one of these every single week, and a lot of you are probably sitting there going, where is Drew? Where is the Iron Man of showing up and talking recruiting? Uh, not Drew today. We're going to talk a little basketball recruiting a little bit more in-depth than what we've done over the past couple of weeks because it's been a lot of football-heavy stuff, which makes a lot of sense with football season in high gear. A good note for everybody, though, to go and check things out over at kstateonline.com would be that even though K-State is playing Arizona on a Friday night, still a pretty good list of visitors that are going to be in town for the Cats and the Cats on Friday night because a lot of guys either just worked out scheduling where they don't have a game this week or we know some of the local guys, their game got moved around to Thursday. So a bunch of different circumstances to where K-State actually going to have uh, a far better visitor list than what we could have imagined when this game got announced for a Friday back in what the the end of the spring or sometime in the summer, whenever it was that the full schedule came out. But before we get into basketball, let's talk football briefly because I think a lot of people know what I'm about to say. But it's good to remind you that the Wildcats are headed to Dublin, Ireland next August for the Aer Lingus College Football Classic. Join your Wildcats by booking your getaway at cats2ireland.com. The best seats and hotels will go fast, so secure your package now. That's Cats, the number two, Ireland.com. Get you set and squared away for Farmageddon 2025 over in Ireland. Now, let's dive into what we're here to talk about, a little K-State basketball recruiting, because the Wildcats, you know, it wasn't too long ago, probably this time last year, getting maybe a couple of weeks after that, once the Patrick and Gongba stuff uh, got decided and it was he was going to Duke, but you we started to think maybe uh, they may not focus too hard on high school recruiting. Like the basketball world is shifting in a different direction. It's all going to be transfer portal. And that's a belief that I held probably up until about late July of this year. And then we started to hear more and more about K-State being involved with high school players and not just any high school player, but some of the best of the best in the country. Uh, what do you make of K-State's attack in basketball recruiting as we sit here in the middle of September? From what I've gathered, I'd like to add at least one to three high schoolers in each class. If it's as little as one, just like it was with David Castillo, that's fine. If it's as many as three, which I think was their actually first class with Buddy Rich, R.J. Jones, and Data Ames, that works too. I think they view that as the sweet spot. But they're also going to make those spots count uh, is how I would interpret it or describe it. I think going after projects or developmental pieces that can be pretty good in two or three years, I don't think they view that as worth it because – and, you know, quite frankly, they could be gone before those two or three years are up, right? Well, and, and I mean, all that. just think about it. Like, they got guys that you wouldn't even necessarily consider to that extent. I mean, R.J. Jones was a guy where he was getting some minutes as a true freshman this past year on a team that was trying to compete, and even he decided to bail. So R.J. Jones wasn't really worth their time, if you think about it. Yeah, so, like, true. that's the kind of thing they have to contend with when when trying to think of how to build a roster now. And obviously with their NIL capabilities, I think they just see it as if we're going to do this high school thing, we're going to get like the best ones. We're not going to get these guys that need a little time in the oven and probably are really good in two or three years. We need to just go get the ones that are good now and rock that way. Else it's like you're really rolling the dice by taking a high school prospect that you hope that you think needs to stay around three or four years because of the rampant uh, player movement that exists in today's college basketball. So I like the strategy. It's going to be tough. Like you, you, you're, you're, you compete for recruits of, of this magnitude and it's a challenge to win these. I mean, a 10, 20%, you know, win rate is probably a good one. Uh, I, I think I'll call it a win if they can land one of these players. Well, that I was, I win. mean, I, I'll just stop you real, right there real quick and ask you, I mean, do, do you think they they are able to land one of these guys during this cycle or is is the high school guy they land going to end up being somebody that we haven't even heard of yet? Because it does seem like every other week 
a new name pops up that's like, oh yeah, this guy's in like the top 50 and uh, here's what he had to say about K-State and he's going to try to make it to Manhattan. So like, can they actually land one of these guys? Because it, here's a look at some of the notable names that are out there right now and their, their rankings that are with them that within the last couple of months have been linked to K-State and have had different comments on what they've thought of K-State. But you notice with the on three RPM there, K-State's not in the top two of either of those. And now certain circumstances, you can say, I'm not going to put a ton of stock into it, but others you still have to kind of buy in and believe to, to what the merit is there. I mean, is K-State ever going to be anything more than just in the mix for these guys? Because Bruce Weber noted after their Elite Eight run, they were able to get into more living rooms with guys. But then we remember his final, well, not his final press conference, but his final press conference at the Big 12 tournament where he starts rattling off all these guys that, well, we you know, we're in the mix for this guy and never got him and all this other stuff. Are they ever actually going to be able to close? Because it's nice to have the excitement and energy of AJ DeBonsa visiting and Darren Peterson. And you think about when Patton Gongbo was here last year, but the next step is actually landing one of these guys. I, I think there are more serious contenders for like that group of prospects that's on the screen, the AJ DeBontas and the Darren Petersons of the world then say what Bruce Weber seriously thought they were when he was here because, you know, getting that actual official visit is a step beyond what they were with Bruce Weber. And, uh, you know, you see there with BYU and then North Carolina for AJ DeBonta. If I was to say, I would say Kansas State might be in that second or third spot for AJ DeBonta and not necessarily North Carolina. Um, I would think it's Kansas State and Alabama. So, I think they're more competitive in that one than meets the eye. But again, if you put a gun to my head and, and ask me to pick a school for all these guys, Kansas State wouldn't be my pick. But there's still time for that to change. Can they land one of these players? Yes. But as that illustrates, they're probably trailing for all of them. And, and they still need to, to give Malik Thomas a visit set there. And if not, then you kind of like where Pitt, UConn, and Auburn are probably a little bit more but Darren Peterson, it's going to be difficult for anyone, not just KU or not just K State, to pull him away from KU. The Debonta one are probably more competitive in. I already had him on campus too, and I think they're more competitive than the most realized for Nate Ament, too, who is the five star that Drum Tang just saw not long ago, and and I would anticipate him visiting at some point as well, like Debonta, a late signee. He will not sign in the early period. And if Malik Thomas signs in the early period, I, I don't really feel great about that one. And for them to really turn the Darren Peterson recruitment around, they're going to have to make significant strides there and probably have a knockout home run grand slam visit at the end of the month, which is possible. He's giving them the opportunity to do that. But with the Adidas connection, you know, the KU pull, that one's going to be tough to overcome. Yeah. So what what do you make of where the recruiting effort stands right now? Like, is this does it make sense to continue down this road, divert resources to it, be in the mix, and will that eventually pave the way for them to be able to land one of these guys, or is what's keeping them in you know the second or even further spot behind the leader in the clubhouse for a lot of these guys going to be the same thing? two years from now that it is at this current point where they're always going to be the bridesmaid, but never the bride. No, I think it's worth it. Cause what, I mean, what else would you be doing right now? Right. I mean, you, you don't recruit transfers during the season. And the only thing to really do divert resources to now is high school recruiting. And, and we just mentioned it doesn't make sense to maybe go after that second or third tier of kids that need time to develop because they could be transferred out before they actually develop. So I think this is a good use of resources in time. So wh where do you anticipate things kind of going next with K-State recruiting, at least in the, the high school phase? And uh, what should people kind of anticipate over the course of these next two cycles and, and maybe where your expectations are for what K-State can pull off? Yeah, I, I anticipate it looking a lot like it does today. Over the next few months, we'll find out, or next several months, we'll find out where A.J. DeBons is going, where Darren Peterson's going, where Nate Immense going, where Malik Thomas is going, and if Kansas State has some good fortune in landing any of those kinds of targets. And if they don't, obviously, you, you kind of backfill with the transfer portal. I think that's just the mode of operation now. What it looks like in a year or two is it is an interesting 
dynamic because with the landscape changing, NIL changing, uh, with you know the revenue sharing and all of that that's going to take place, I I want to see that kind of in action and what it looks like before I say with any kind of definitive confidence that it's going to look like a certain way. I feel like the sport changes every year at this point. I think there is stability coming at some point once all this gets basically settled in the courts and stuff, but it, it's hard to kind of, you know, use the magnifying glass and, and look what it's going to look like in a year or two anymore, just because it changes so much. Uh, the, basically just the, like the structure and the rules and everything is what's really changed. And it's going to look different again next year because, you know, as I alluded to revenue sharing is going to, I think be a, you know, a significant component to this. And we'll see if that, you know, modifies strategy at all. Do you think in the, in at some point over the next five years that K-State is able to land uh, one of these top 20 guys or top yeah, 20 guys yeah, that, they're, that I they would continue to covet. Yeah, because I, I think they're going to have a really good team this year. I think this staff can really recruit well. So I would say yes. Um, now the university is probably in a position too where they're going to have to raise a lot more money going forward because you, you have to give out what the couple million each year just to satisfy parts of the settlement agreement in the house first NCAA case. And then you have to use 20 million that you're basically getting in television money already and giving that to athletes. So now you have 20 million less than you typically operate with. So you need to raise money for that 20 million. And then you got to think the money that goes to the collective. I don't think you can just stop doing that part. Yeah. So there there's, unfortunately it, the, the cost of co competing um, and participating is getting more and more expensive for schools like K-State. So it's going to come down to the appetite and the desire of, you know, of the K-State supporters of how, how much this means to them. Now, knowing the K-State community and, and kind of uh, the, the nuts and bolts of what K-State is and the, the people that care and how much it means to them, I think they will figure it out. But there, there's a lot. There's going to be a lot more demand for your what's in your pockets going forward. Well, and I guess that would be the one thing that if you want to think that K-State's going to be able to pull this off at some point with one of these guys, the pockets seem to be pretty deep compared to other programs right now. Uh, and, and maybe that's what's able to you know carry K-State over the top in A.J. DeBons or whoever else's recruitment. It'll be fascinating to watch and kind of see unfold. But uh, K-State making strides and at least being notable – in these recruitments. And I, I guess the, the one way to look at this glass half full, we, we've kind of alluded to it, but even if they continue to, to work on these guys and then whiff, there's overall not like a severe penalty. Cause like what you said, what else would they be doing right now? And then in addition to that, they've done a pretty good job in the transfer portal. Really two of the three seasons that they've had the portal to work with. It's easy. And I would to even say that what they did last year wasn't as bad as what people perceive. They just, you know, they had some other stuff go on there, but uh, so it's, they're in a spot where it's like the, that cheesy saying or whatever, that if you, you shoot for the moon and miss, you land amongst the stars or whatever. That's kind of the, the recruiting approach for K-State basketball right now. It feels like. Yeah, two things. One, you, you can't win these and, and without getting in the mix. So if they've they've reached this point. And two is, and I said it's easy to erase your mistakes. Mistakes probably not the operative word there. More like you can fill your holes and voids and make up for anyone you might have missed on by going in the port. I mean, that's easy. That's why, I mean, here's the example. That's why there's basically three or four teams of college football this year you know, this is quibbling. You can quibble a little bit on this, but basically have zero holes. They have zero weaknesses. I'm talking about like a Texas or a Georgia or Ohio state, because when they get done with a year and they recruit everyone, they look at the roster and they're like, okay. And, and, you know, in the past, before the advent of the transfer portal and NIL, they're like, well, we're not really good in two or three of the 2020 of the 22 spots. So we're just going to have to, 
coach our way out of those, right? Now you get done with spring football and you're like, well, we're not good at these three spots. And you're like, okay, I'm going to go get that guy and that guy and that guy. And now we have no, now we have no holes. Now we have no weaknesses. In college football, that didn't used to be the case. Your weaknesses were your weaknesses because there was no way to fix them or fill them or the holes. Now you can. So now you have literally teams that don't have weaknesses. In college basketball, it's kind of the same. Not that every team has zero weaknesses or any teams have zero weaknesses. But if you miss on a few of your high school targets and you're a couple roster spots down, you're just going to get those couple guys in the transfer portal. And those guys are probably more ready to compete now than your high school kid would be. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it works out. And then obviously, uh, everybody knows if you're surrounded by K-State, uh, after the season ends, you're going to have a fascinating offseason with a transfer portal again, where whether it's the high school guys that we mentioned here uh, or the the guys in the portal this upcoming season, they're going to know that K-State had a large swath of money to work with, at least perception-wise, with some of the guys that they landed this offseason. They're going to want a piece of that. It will make K-State at least somebody that they'll be very interested in. And I, I would say in some ways, like at the end of the day, K-State already proved that they can get over the top and win some of these recruitments uh, that, you know, if you think going into it, eh, K-State's there, but what are the chances it happens? Uh, I mean, Coleman Hawkins might be the best example of that, where uh, as much as the second he was in the portal, I would jokingly say to Alec Bussey, RIP, not dead, uh, that I'd love to have Coleman Hawkins at K-State and just to try and, you know, get under his skin as the Illini that he is, and he would just immediately be like, oh, no, he's not going to end up there. It'll be here or wherever. At the end of the day, K-State was able to win it out because they were able to sell the attraction of the spot and everything that you, you have always had to do with recruiting. But then they also had the financial backing as well that you need in this NIL era to get themselves over. So just because at the moment you see all those schools next to those names and the power cat isn't there, doesn't mean that when you get down to the end of it, that it won't be. And uh, it'll be fascinating to follow along uh, the recruiting pros- process, as it always is now with Jerome Tang leading K-State basketball. So that will do it for us today. For Derek Young, I'm Mason Vo. Thanks for watching K-State Online. If you want more on K-State basketball and football recruiting, head over to On3, find KSO, go from there, get signed up, become a member. If you're not, you can see all the guys that will be visiting this weekend for the Arizona game. On the football side of it, Drew has you covered there. And then D.Y. and I will be back tomorrow with your game preview on a Thursday as we prepare for K-State and Arizona Top 20 Showdown Friday night at Bill Snyder Family.